Hey, what's up, Phil? What's on? Oh, not much. All right, so uh, start off talking about the lyric video for Halo. Um, there's a lot going on visually, and I love to see that with a lyric video. It's a personal preference of mine. Who created it, and what's the story behind that track? Uh, well, Wombat did it. The guy that, that did the uh, it's on the cover, and he did all the layout for the, for the whole record, and he did uh, a lot of the uh, filming for the internet shorts that we had or that you can find on our Facebook page and stuff. Uh, so he, he's been kind of the creative director for all the imagery for for this uh, this record. So Madness seems to be a good mixture of the band's older and newer styles, always experimental and unapologetic. How has the band handled the progression and sound over the years, and how did it transition to this album? Uh, well, it's always been pretty uh, pretty natural, pretty natural progression. I mean, we we, we kind of just get together and write songs that we like is really what we want to do. You know, we, we don't want to go ahead and, and worry about are we doing this for someone else, or are we doing this for that group or person or whatever. Um, it's always, you know, how do we feel about it? So that's that's really our, our focus, you know, when we, when, we, uh, when we get together, and that's, that's what it always is. This question comes in a collaboration with my with a good friend and fan, Joshua Smith. Um, what was your biggest inspiration while writing the lyrics for Mac Madness? For the, the song Madness? Um, well, I mean, it was, the song's kind of about how, you know, people can do things that are kind of contrary to what's in their best benefit. And a lot of times they, they tend to do them over and over and over, you know, get, whether it be people that are alcoholics or drug addicts or, you know, you can expand it to a societal level where you're dealing with things like, you know, Marxism and communism. Uh, but it, it, it seems like it's part of the human condition that there is always, you know, a repetitive cycle that, that humanity goes through and trying to break those cycles is, uh, is again, part of the human condition. So it's really more commentary on that than anything else. Do you have a favorite track from Madness currently? Um... I don't know. I, I, it, it changes from, you know, periodically. I like, I really like If I'm Honest, because that was such a, a different style of song for it. Um, but I, you know, I really like Never Sorry, because I like the, con the content of the lyrics. Um, Safe House is arguably one of the heaviest tracks you've written to date. Uh, what's the story behind that one, and did you always have it in mind to open the record? Uh, it wasn't so, I mean, when we, when we got the song together and then had the, uh, you know, the, the whole track listing and all, you know, figured out all the songs that we were going to put on the record and stuff. It was pretty quick that people were like, we should just go ahead and open with the fastest heavy one we got to kind of just kick people in the, you know, in the privates early. <laughs> <laughs> um, the story behind it, it was, it was kind of looking at, look, it was kind of like a, a different take on something similar to like Dexter. I guess that was kind of the inspiration for the, the, the song, you know, where there's a guy that uses uh, uses uh, some breaking into his house as a cover for an excuse to kill people. So he kind of leaves the house easily broken into and, and then smokes people when they break in. Let's talk about the curveball that was thrown, your cover of Thunder Rolls by the legendary Garth Brooks. Um, I have four questions pertaining to it. Number one is what led to the decision to cover this song, and more importantly, how did it end up on the album? Uh, well, we, we talked about it. Honestly, for a long, long time, I brought it up that I really did the song. And then when we were talking about doing a cover for the song, and again, I brought it up. I was like, what do you guys think? And everyone kind of checked it out. And our management was into it. And our our, our producer, Howard, was into it. And you know, we, we would go back and forth between songs. It would be like, you know, we, we kind of were like, yeah, we did Thunder Rolls. And then, you know, someone would bring up another song and be like, hey, what do you think of this? Uh, and then, you know, some people would be like, eh. But it always came down to the Thunder Rolls was the one that, Everyone kind of was like, yeah, that'll be cool. Did you or management reach out to Garth regarding making it happen? No. Was it tough to keep that ATR sound while paying tribute to the original? Um, we didn't do a whole ton of changing. I mean, it's arranged a little bit differently. That, you know, we had a producer come in and kind of change the arrangement. But when, when it came to the actual tracking and stuff, we didn't do a whole ton of stuff differently than, than we do, you know, the way we track any other song. So... I felt like it, it kind of was a good representation right away. So it, it didn't seem like it was, we got to try to make this sound like all that remains. We did, you know, it, it just kind of, kind of felt like it did. And 
the last question about that is, who is the female vocalist heard on this track? Oh, I'm not sure who's... I think it was Marone. It was, it was, she's a singer that, uh, that sings for Howard on a lot of stuff. Um, and I don't know if it's the same singer or not. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Your spring tour couples with some huge festivals, along with some dates with Corn, Five Finger Death Punch, and The Devil Wears Prada. What can fans expect from these shows, and uh, how will they differ from previous ATR performances? And how many new songs are you bringing out? Um, I'm not sure how many new songs we're gonna do. Um, actually, I think we're probably gonna do we'll probably do three. But considering the fact that it's a uh, short set, there's songs that people are gonna want to hear. So we may only be able to squeeze two in um, for the fest, for the, the support shows and stuff. Any headliners we, we do, we could probably throw another another new one. But uh, you know, we got we got eight records now, so people kind of are expecting to hear certain things and trying to find new, you know, trying to get new songs in there. Sometimes you have to take something out, and then you know, you get people on the internet that are mad they didn't hear the air that I breathe or whatever. So you know, it's tough to do. Uh, on the subject of touring, my good friend Matthew Powers has always admired how you keep your uh, your set list varied, and he would like to know how you plan on keeping older material in your set list, and if fans can ever expect you to break anything out from This Darkened Heart or Behind Silence and Solitude. Behind Silence and Darkened, probably not. I mean, maybe you'll see us do some of that stuff internationally, uh, but I, I don't see us doing it here in the States because, I mean, we do... You know, we've got a lot of stuff that people are really familiar with, and, and when we play stuff off dark and our behind silence, it's, you know, the, the, the crowd usually tends to kind of just stare at us blankly because they're not sure where, where that one came from. So, um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't foresee anything from this dark and heart or, uh, or behind silence and solitude anytime soon. Uh, for the last portion of their most recent arena tour, you filled in for Ivan Moody on uh, Five Finger Death Punch as he fell ill. What was that experience like, and how were you approached about it? Uh, it was the second time that someone called me up in the middle of the night and said, hey, Bill, can you get on an airplane in the morning? <laughs> uh, so, you know, I mean, yeah, I got, a, I got a message from Zoltan, and I got a message from our management saying, hey, can you go fill in? And so my reply was, you know, send me a set list. I need to know what songs I need to know and I gotta brush up on the lyrics and stuff. So, and, and it, it was a great time. It was tons of fun. The guys were super cool. The, the crew was great. So, it was, it was awesome that I was available to do it and stuff. But, uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was tons of fun and it was cool. <laughs> what is something about Madness that you hope fans or people in general will grasp when listening to the album? Oh, I don't know. I just kind of hope that they, uh, that they listen to it. <laughs> I, 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 I'm not super concerned about making sure that uh, any particular message that I have gets through to a listener, uh, because people take different things from from a song. You can take different things from it's all subjective when it comes to art. So I, I don't worry about what people take away. I, I think that they're going to take away what they're going to take away, and hopefully they just you know if they like it, that's all I care. About. My good friend Tristan Lang would like to know what inspired you to write music in the first place. Uh, Iron Maiden, maybe, probably. I, mean, I, I was into. I started playing guitar when I was fourteen, so uh, you know, just getting a guitar and, and learning to play the stuff that uh, that uh, you know, like that I listened to was uh, was really the deal for me. When writing Madness, did you have a specific vision in mind? Uh, and if so, what was that vision? Um, no, they, again, the, when we're doing stuff, when we're writing music, really the only thing that we worry about nowadays is, is do we like it? If everyone likes it, then cool, we'll use it. If, if people have issues with it or people want to change it or, or whatever, then, then you know, it, it might not get used. But even still, there's stuff that, that I, you know, that we have, have used that I personally wasn't into, but other people in the band were, you know, so that, that's, that's just part of, 
being in a band, in my opinion. Uh, so, you know, it, it's really just a matter of get together and just write some, write some music, write some songs, and, and see how everyone feels about what we got. Well, unfortunately, that's about all I have for you. Uh, I do appreciate your time. I know you're a busy man, and it's been an honor. Is there anything else you'd like to say before we wrap this up? Uh, no, thanks for everyone that uh, that's you know, pre-ordered and stuff like that, and hopefully people will pick it up. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. And check, it out. check us out on uh, Facebook and on the Twitters and the uh, Instagrams and stuff. All right. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you, and uh, I hope okay. you have a wonderful rest of your day. Mm-hmm.